Hello, John. Hello, Oliver. And today we're going to talk about mass and mass and COVID times, and it seems to be like a crime uh, going to mass these days. That's right. There's been articles written about it, a few, uh, because it's a movable feast, if you could call it that, or a movable interference with the practice of the Catholic and Christian faith. Other other uh, faiths would be affected by it, but we don't hear what they have to say too much, or else if they do say anything, it's not reported. Uh, but uh, about this... Um, uh, interfering with the practice of the mass. Uh, this is April, uh, April this year, four, three or four months ago, if you like, and a big article in one of the magazines uh, that comes from abroad, and it says the leader of the Irish Church has called for the suspension of new rules criminalising the holding of a religious service, which the government introduced last week in a surprise move. Could you would you be surprised at anything that this government would do? I don't think so, mm-hmm. because uh, they have blood on their hands. We know that. In a statement, Archbishop Eamon Martin, uh, the Primate of our Ireland, uh, his previous incumbent at that office was Cardinals, but he hasn't been risen to the rank yet. In a statement, Archbishop Martin said that the penal provisions, penal. Don't forget. They have a terrible memory as regards to people. Absolutely, times, yeah. When priests had to celebrate mass on ra- mass rocks, and they're doing it again mm-hmm. in in places, you know. So, um, so, so uh, associated with the new red S O E, it says one seven one two o two one, were provocative. Here's what it says: and draconian, and potentially infringe religious freedom and constitutional rights. Does this government that we're saddled with pay any attention to constitutional rights, which guarantee, guarantees religious freedom, not just for the Catholic faith, which was the majority, but for Christian faiths in general, that they could practice their faith without interference from the state, good, bad or indifferent, under any circumstances? Well, you can see, John, at the moment, there's a complete erosion of democracy when you see what's happening with the passport for... Well, this is it, you see. It leads on to other things. This is what you call control, and it's not control for the good of the citizen. It is interfering drastically with their freedom, Uh, but particularly the freedom of the people confused in lots of ways because uh, they've had this now for nearly, going on two years, I'd say, at this stage. And they seem to be no further on in treating this virus One would think with the medical profession and the expertise that they're reputed to have because of the amount of study that they do, they would be able to treat this uh, virus uh, far better than they seem to be indicating because they keep talking about variants and various different uh, permutations of it. Uh, the flu injection is often changed every year because the flu sort of um, varies from year to year. So they try to anticipate, and I get a flu injection, which has been quite effective. How long are you getting the flu injection? Uh, for the past, uh, more or less since I think I retired. Uh, it, I didn't get it probably before that, I don't recall, because that's going back a bit, but I'm certainly getting it for quite a while because it's a safeguard against the flu, and thank God I have never got it. I don't think John Malone ever retired. He seems to be, <laughs> he seems to be busier than ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, but you see, this is it, actually. I think it's good for the upstairs department, shall we say, oh, the, is, br- the brain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You have to keep on top of uh, events as they occur, especially in these times. These times are the most peculiar of all time. Now, Archbishop Mar- Martin, the primate of all Ireland and the Catholic faith, and his equivalent uh, is up there now Ma, for the Church of Ireland, uh, the Anglican faith. And I presume he's concerned about it as well, although we don't hear what he has to say. The fact of the matter is uh, that the, the archbishops and the bishops have made their views known. But it's fallen on deaf ears. Falling on deaf ears. I'll give you another little example. I've just indicated there the alarm that the Archbishop has expressed. And before that, they were cooperating with this government as regards the measures that they were inflicting on people by way of social distance and masks and 
this, that and the other and vaccines now, they're trying to infect, and vaccinate everybody, vaccinate, we're going to say infectionate. <laughs> 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 vaccinated they want a hundred percent vaccination now, John. That's yeah, so and now they're going to use it as something to do with passports, which was they denied in the beginning. Now it says here also the police block roads to deter people from attending mass. We did something about this before about the church in uh, a little parish in Cavan. Father Hughes, who was a missioner in the Ecuador, he would have had to contend with. Uh, very hot weather and perhaps people that might uh, send them to the next world as quick as look at them because it's a it's a slightly unstable country but Absolutely. he was there suffering with all sorts of of, of deprivations mm -hmm. and now he's here and he's been summoned and five and fined 600 euros uh, because he he celebrated mass and a few people went to it it's in a place called Muller, Muller Horn or Muller something in County Cavan. And I'll tell you something, you'd want a map to try and find it because it's very difficult to find. How the police descended on that is a mystery to John Malone and uh, uh, Christian TV Ireland. No. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, so yeah. The, 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 And the people's names was, was taken, uh, interfering with it. You can just visualise what, 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 what Catholics and Christians in, 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 uh, uh, during the persecutions of the, of the Catholics and Christians, the Jews in Germany all those years is ago. This, is this the, the church you're talking about where the police entered the church? And stopped the mass. Oh, they did that in, in some other place. Uh, that, that's an example. They did that too. That was terrible. Uh, and of course it is. Uh, but they, they blocked the roads in this place, which is, uh, 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 you can go to Cavan on that particular road. And I had a customer in that little village who was associated with the church. Uh, because they would be all associated with it. It would be the, uh, the and the community hall would be the main feature of their, of their, uh, whatever they'd be doing and putting on plays and that. So uh, let's face it, they, 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 they have interfered with it, but the fact that they're using penal laws, yes, uh, could you credit it? Yeah. Would you think it was possible? No, you wouldn't. That's the thing. And by the way, even as we speak, there's been further restrictions again. They're interfering that they can't have baptisms or, or, or uh, confirmations and the First Holy Communions in Catholic churches and I suppose in other churches that have, have perhaps the sacrament or have a confir a confirmation. I don't know whether they call it a sacrament or not, but uh, suffice to say that they're, that they're stopping that and there's a hue and cry about it because it's, they're still carrying it on. And then they're limiting people to 50 or whatever it is in a church that might hold a thousand. I mean, it's ludicrous. Yeah. So it seems to me that they're persecuting Christians. That's what I do. It does appear that way. Um, I wonder, the thing about it is, you don't see, the only thing we're seeing is about the Catholic Church, right? There are other Christian faiths in Ireland, right, as we know, um, and you don't see them stopping. I haven't heard of anything where they've gone into an Orthodox church or they've gone into uh, any of the other Presbyterian churches. I haven't. Or, or, the, or the Muslim uh, mosques. Yes, you haven't. You uh, yeah, but I mean, we, we haven't heard from them. We, we don't know if they're interfered with as well. In other words, that they can't hold their services. Uh, because if they're, if they're, if they're penalising the, the, the Catholic faith, they're obviously doing it to other faiths. Uh, but we don't hear, uh, because we're in a society, uh, we're, in a, we're in a situation that the media is practically controlled by this government. As far as I can see, if this government gives anybody any money, any institution, they try to dictate to them. Yes. And the church, I think, in this country and have, has charitable status. In other words, I don't know if there's rates on their buildings. I don't think there is. It could be threatened that that would occur. Oh, it's probably down the pipeline. Well, you see, they, they have these, what I call, stings up their sleeve. Yeah. And the sort that they are, they will be capable of doing that. But I think they should be challenged to do their damnedest. And then we'll see what has happened. The fact that these, this crowd is ruling the country at the moment were elected on proportional representation, some of them up to the 11 count. Uh, they haven't got the mandate to govern the way they're governed and to interfere with people the way they are. I mean, are they running the country or is it doctors? 
doctors uh, that are not responsible. Nobody voted for these well, doctors. Well, I'll tell you, you know Neffet, just Neffet, and that, that you see, the, 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 oh, the, yes, the advisory, yeah. advisory committee. Yeah. What I think has happened there is it appears to me that, that Neffet is the puppet, okay? The fall guy for the government. So when Neffet suggests something, let's, but let's suppose there was no Neffet, okay? Yes. So the, so the government comes along, they have a terrible idea, it fails, they get blamed. Whereas if they have Neffet there, okay, Neffet comes up with the terrible ideas, okay, some of them are good. Um, but every, for every bad idea, they get blamed and the government looks clean. Well, then, the the idea that this woman looks clean, (laughs) to to me, doesn't occur because they're the ones, ultimately, that carry the can. They can blame this, that and the other, but we know that they're responsible at the end of the day. They can't say that they're... They can't... They can't deny their responsibility. And that's the important thing. Uh, There's a priest celebrating Mass on a Mass rock. Okay. Uh, just recently and Wonder they're doing it quite a lot now because of this ban yeah. again that they've imposed the mass ban and the drift towards a new form of totality. have you any idea where that is John does it say it there where the mass rock is uh, it says Father Jerry, Jared just Quirk it up there so we can see it. C- celebrates the Eucharist on a mass rock on Easter Sunday to highlight the ban on people attending mass it doesn't actually say but there's mass rocks all around the country let's yeah, face it and, uh, most people don't know about them well you see the because they're not told they're about not them told, yeah. uh, but they will be told about them when the christian tv ireland project is up and running yes. uh we we won't be denying them that information which is factual and true uh, uh this is written by a fellow called dr Philip Gonzalez, and he's uh, a professor in one of the uh, institutes here in this country. And uh, although he he has a sort of a, a South American name, Gonzalez, but he's uh, he's he's very good. And um, and his philosopher George Eberman has warned that the church's response to the p- p- a pandemic has too easily forgotten. The work of mercy. This is an excellent art here, but uh, it all boils down to the business of the interference with the practice of, of Christian, of, of the Christian faith, in Catholic churches. I presume in in all the other Protestant churches, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Church of Ireland, the Angli- which is the Anglican Church, and perhaps the uh, the, the the Muslim um, mosques. Uh, the mosque that the Muslims uh, cel- uh, that um, have their uh, celebrate their faith that way, and uh, they seem all the Muslims seem to, without exception, attend their their mosque, and they take their 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 uh, the Muslim faith very serious from what they do, one they do, can and that's see. probably why they're not being interfered with. Because well, you see, back. they must be interfered with because they can't just do for one and not do for another because then that's discrimination of the worst order when, yeah, right. after all, the majority of people in this country are Christian. But the name discrimination seems to be a regular thing now, John, with the pandemic in every aspect of society. Well, but you see, how long are they going to keep this business up? As I said, uh, in the normal course of events with any virus, uh, they're able to sort of deal with it in due course and life goes back to normal. But this crowd doesn't seem to want life to go back to normal. I mean, they have nearly two years now to sort of deal with this. But I, just, I just believe that they don't know what they're... First of all, they, they, they have a fair idea what they're dealing with, but they just don't know how to deal with it. And I think what they're going to end up doing, and we'll do a video on it, I think we're doing a video on it today, um, what they're going to end up doing probably is... Do you remember the fever hospitals? I do. I think what they're going to end up doing is they're going to end up building COVID hospitals, small COVID hospitals where you get your your vaccine and the whole lot, but also where you're cared for in ICUs, separate to the main hospitals, and that's going to be the end of it all. Because and they're going to have to open up society and just build those hospitals because I will, you can't lock down society forever. I'm not not at all, and you can't interfere with the freedom of people going about yes. and being able to go places and travel abroad if they wish to visit relatives and and visit holy places if they're christians and what have you but also go for a bit of a break as well yes. to, to, to to relax the mind because normally we have a very wet country here but lately we've had uh, a kind of a heat wave if you like to call it and uh, i 
I've experienced uh, uh, that uh, at first hand, uh, trying to cut grass and 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 all the rest of it. And I've been absolutely, um, in some ways, uh, I've had to have a shower after it, and it's been been nearly worn out. Yeah, uh, fellow my age probably should be just looking at it and seeing the crow, but uh, I like to keep it in order. And I have a ride on more, but even on that, and had a cap on me and all the rest of it, and was wearing thick all, or very little. And do you know what I'm going to tell you? Uh. I still had to have a shower, and not alone that, but drink water. Yeah. You'd be come to dehydrate it. So you have to very, take very it very warm. careful. But anyways, I digress. Uh, no, um, I see people, God help them, sometimes driving cars with masks on. Right. I see them out in the fresh air with masks on. Right. What is the idea? And it's a very depressing picture to be at mass or whatever church you attend and see all the poor people people wear masks I don't uh, because I've had the second vaccine uh, but I refuse to go down this road of masks morning noon and night it is I would say look for me I'm fairly good with the mask and I know I, no, I don't wear it in the street and I don't wear it in the park or the beach right and I don't go to the beach really as such now but the thing about it is in a supermarket where you have a crowd of people I would say wear a mask well then, sometimes you can't go into the supermarket. There's a fella standing at the That's door, right. like, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> puts me in mind that he gets stamp up. But well, we won't, we won't run him down that way. But yeah. he's there to make sure. Where's your mask? And all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, one is harried uh, about masks. And even though in other jurisdictions it says when you have a second vaccine you don't have to wear a mask, uh, but not in this jurisdiction. Well, see, the thing about it is people, um, I know of one case where a woman had the, the two Pfizer vaccines last February and now she's infected with uh, COVID and she, she got it bad. Well, then it means then the Blinken vaccines is not effective. I wouldn't say they're not effective, but uh, new variants probably... Um, and that, you know. Well, it says, like in other places, that uh, the vaccine is supposed to cater for all these new variants. Uh, because, like everything else, it's going to mutate. Everything mutates uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, that's normal. It's not something abnormal. Yeah. The same with the flu injection that you get every year. The flu mutates a bit. So um, they, they, they should have the wherewithal with the training that they have to deal with these. If you go back, John, if, if you go back to the 1700s, the smallpox outbreak, okay? The smallpox outbreak lasted, oh, geez, I think it was 50 to 60 years, right? And every 10 years it broke out. And I think that's probably what we're facing with COVID. And that's why I'm saying when we do a video about it, and that we need to start building small COVID centres, care centres for people. Uh, probably that would be a solution, but uh, they, need, they might have had to start about that. There was fever hospitals built for people that had fevers because uh, people got fevers, particularly during the wars that uh, happened. And there was also other various diseases transmitted uh, by, by um, the way people lived and so on and so forth and overcrowded conditions. We had it here in this country. We had TB rampant. So you do have various uh, illnesses and uh, but I think they have found some uh, vaccines for this so I think uh, they should be able to just get on with it without exaggerating it to the extent I think that they're doing I mean after all uh, it's the same as anything if you've got problems in any kind of part of society or vehicles or anything like that eventually uh, they're fixed don't forget the cars that started years ago you had to wind them up I had one my first car I had to wind it like this and give it you know so I had to be fit like if I was as old as I am now I think I'd probably never get anywhere because I couldn't <laughs> be doing this <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. I say John a, a a pushed the car up the hill at this stage because uh, he's, well, he's, he's I remember one fit. time when I got a lend of a car and I couldn't hardly drive, and I asked my mother to sit in the middle of the car so as it didn't uh, uh, kind of capsize. <laughs> 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 I bought it out and never for a boil, and she was saying the rosary. I think on the twain she taught me we'd never get there, but we got there. Very good. <laughs> Thanks very much, John. You're welcome.